Hello there. Um, welcome to this our latest Q&A session. Uh, today's is about um, higher education for teacher training. My name is Neil Cox and I work for Capital City College Group and I'll be your host for about the next hour or so. As I said, we're looking at higher education courses to prepare you for a career in teaching. It's something that's obviously very topical at the moment. Teachers are very much in the news as the nation sort of comes back, comes back to normal or starts to come back to normal after the uh, coronavirus lockdown is released. Um, so um, we have a great programme today. Uh, we'll, we'll be loosely following this schedule. So we have uh, Maralba Jani. She's a curriculum manager uh, for teacher training at Cornell, which is the College of Haringey, Enfield and North East London. Um, we in Capital City College Group have three different colleges and Cornell is one of them. Um, the next uh, presentation will be from Matthew Calvert. He is the head of ESOL and teacher training at City and Islington College. So he'll be talking to you about the uh, courses that the City and Islington College run um, as well. We have a Q&A function that's been set up uh, for today's session. So please do ask questions, type your questions in and we'll do our best to answer those um, at the end of each of the presentations. And if there's anything we can't answer, we'll try and get back to you um, afterwards. So why would you choose to study with one of our colleges? That's a very good question. Um, we offer a range uh, of courses to qualify you to work in the teaching profession. They're validated by our partner uh, universities, which is Canterbury Christchurch. Um, and they're awarded by City and Guilds or Cambridge. Our lecturers are highly experienced, uh, which means that you can get a real insight into the opportunities and challenges of working in this very, very rewarding sector. We pride ourselves on the high level of support that we offer our students as well. We have small group sizes and regular tutor tutorials, so you can benefit from lots of opportunities to question, discuss and practice, and that applies online um, as well as face-to-face -face teaching, which we hope we'll be able to introduce later on in the academic year, as again, as the lockdown um, comes back to normal. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, we also offer support with work placements and experience where applicable, and we always try and do that because obviously being able to teach in a real classroom is uh, a really important part of, of your studies. And happily, financial support is also available through the government student loan or advanced learner loan schemes. And more on that later on. We can also offer additional support with things like mental health, childcare, financial support um, and careers. We pride ourselves on the, the high levels of support that we offer to our students. So I think that's enough from me. Hopefully that's given you a little bit of a flavour as to why you should want to study with us. I'm now going to hand over to Maral Bajani, who is, as I said, works at the College of Haringey, Enfield and North East London. So over to you, Maral. Thank you very much, Neil. Hi, everyone. Welcome to this live Q&A event. Next slide, please. At, at Cornell, we have got an impressive range of qualifications in our teacher education department. Um, actually, we have got programmes starting from level two to level seven. Uh, however, today I shall be focusing on our higher education programmes um, at levels four, five, six and seven. We offer our programmes through two different ways, either through Canterbury Christchurch University or the awarding organisation City and Guilds. I shall cover each one separately. So let's start, let's kick this off with Canterbury Christchurch University programmes. Um, we offer two key qualifications here. Let's kind of think about who are these qualifications for in the first place. These qualifications are relevant to um, current teachers who are already working in the sector, but also to the new entrance to the profession. And here we are talking about the post 14 education and training sector. We start with level five and level six qualifications. You would have widely seen this as DET in its acronym DET or the Diploma in Education and Training. Our diploma through Canterbury Christchurch University is quite specific because the students have an option here. We've got the diploma at level five, but also the option to study it at level six 
as a professional graduate certificate in education in the second year. This is an in-service program. The second program that we offer with Canterbury is the PGC in further education at level seven. Uh, it is very sort of important to highlight here that both qualifications lead to qualified teacher status in the learning and skills sector. Next slide, please. And now we move on to our um, second route of offering um, teacher training qualifications, and that is through the awarding organization City and Guilds. Again, our teacher training qualifications are relevant for post 14 education and training sector. We offer the certificate in education and training at level four, CET, the level five diploma in education and training. And again, upon completion of level five, then all students have um, the opportunity to go through the professional formation to gain the qualified teacher learning and skills sector status. Next slide, please. Well, let's dive into um, each qualification in a little bit more detail. So we start with Canterbury Christchurch University. We start with our Diploma in Education and Training and Professional Graduate Certificate in Education at levels five and level six. This is a two year part time program offered over um, more or less about 30 weeks in the academic year. Um, attendance on both years is uh, one day a week for your theory part of the programme and in a way you will have your practical element, but that will be the, your, your place of work where your teaching practice naturally happens. It's very important to highlight that um, in order to be accepted on the programme, you have to meet certain entry requirements such as a level three, a minimum at least of a level three qualification in the subject of specialism. You have to go through an interview and there we will see that you are demonstrating the ability to benefit from the course. You'll have to successfully complete all the interview activities, which include things like um, sort of questions and answers about the sector, things like um, reflecting on a piece of writing so that we can assess your ability to work at level five or six. You'll have to meet the teaching requirements for the um, for the particular uh, program. And on this occasion, it is 100 hours over two years. So if you're thinking about, OK, I've got perhaps up to 40, 50 hours in the first year, that is fine. So as long as you've got 40 or above hours for the first year, then the rest of it, you can make it up in your second year. Next slide, please. OK, so we've got the Diploma in Education and Training or the Professional Graduate Certificate in Education. What are we aiming to achieve um, whilst you go through the two year program? Uh, we hope and we um, sort of work towards gaining the knowledge and skills uh, which will provide you uh, the ability to be engaged in effective learning, inclusive teaching and learning and in being exposed to a range of assessment opportunities. You will develop your knowledge and understanding of a range of um, issues that are in a way in the sector these days, wider issues, social issues, political issues and pedagogical issues. Um, whilst you are on the programme, you will be reflecting on the professional standards, on 20 professional standards, and actually you will be required to demonstrate the ability to meet the 20 professional standards. You will actually need to demonstrate that you are using your reflective experience in developing inclusive practice. Um, you will need to demonstrate the ability to use professional and academic texts in a very um, sort of principled way and in a critical way. Uh, you will also be expected to um, enhance your subject knowledge, but also towards to kind of work towards increasing your awareness of English, math and ICT, particularly if you are going to undertake the English and math and ICT pathways. Next slide, please. OK, here we've got kind of an overview of the content. Um, I would like to preface this part with an important concept, which in a way uh, permeates all of the programmes in um, teacher education, and I'm referring to here to higher education. Um, all our programmes have got a very, um, um, a very important link, um, um, 
um, a link which is between theory and practice and as indeed um, ancient philosophers recognized this that um, theory without practice is empty and practice without theory then is blind. So being based on that, we know that it is very important to have this organic link between the two. And indeed, it is this organic link that will be the main thread through all of the teacher education qualifications, either at level four, five, six or seven. You'll go through a number of topics. As you can see here, there's from module one to module six. So there are six different topics you will cover three in the first year, three in the second year of the program. Um, you will start with the basics like introduction to teaching and learning. You will move on to um, talking about learner progress. In your second year, we probably will see that you are able to look at text in a more critical way and applying uh, your critical thinking, analyzing different texts up to your final module where you will talk about developing your practice in general and you will be writing um, sort of a very kind of an in-depth analysis of your practice as such. Um, you'll have teaching practice throughout the program, 100 hours over two years, um, and it is very important that you have identified at the point of entry a subject specialist mentor, who in a way will be your critical friend throughout this journey. You will have observations of your teaching practice, as you would expect. There are eight observations in total, four by your um, personal tutor, uh, who could be our, um, uh, our college staff or Canterbury Christ Church University staff and for observations by your mentor. Um, throughout the program, you are expected to reflect on your practice and it is the professional development journal that is the tool via which you are going to reflect on your practice. You are going to, in a way, record your journey, your progress. Um, you will, you'll record there your starting point, your initial assessment, your continuous assessment, up to the kind of final assessment of your uh, of, of your practice. Um, we expect that you record in your professional development journal um, kind of on a weekly basis and uh, you can include their clips, images, resources that you have used in a way bring that journal to life. So if you have to ask the question what what was my journey, my practical journey throughout the experience on the program then then your professional development journal should be able to demonstrate that. Um, you will have one to one and group tutorials and these are kind of platforms where you will discuss with your tutors your personal progress, your journey either as a, a teacher in a particular subject area or your journey in a way. How are you developing with your academic writing, with your research? So that's a very good place for you to, to either discuss in smaller groups or on a one to one basis. As you would expect, there are written assignments. There are eight, uh, six of them. Uh, three in the first year, three in the second year. And um, I would like to highlight that you will be taught by our teacher education team, which in a way includes our teaching staff at Cornell and the teaching staff from Canterbury Christ Church University. Next slide. Um, you will see here that we have got a debt specialist pathway with Canterbury Christ Church. Um, this is not a separate qualification as such. So if you like, if you start um, on the debt program, you have the choice that if you are, for example, an English ESOL or literacy, maths or learners with special needs uh, specialist, that you might choose that you want to take the debt with the subject specialist pathway. Or indeed, you may just choose to take the debt generic way. However, if the subject specialist pathway is something that interests you, the option is there and is available. Um, pathways are available at different uh, partner colleges, which are in partnership with the Canterbury Christ Church University. So you'd need to kind of in a way at the point of entry to consider that you might have to travel to a different college to take that particular module. Uh, there are two subject specialist modules and I'll talk about it in a little bit more detail later. So just bear that in mind that if you're going to go through the pathway, there could be some travel here. But of course, um, if you are committed and you would like to take that journey, then we're happy to support you uh, apply and undertake the qualification with a subject specialist pathway. Next slide, please, Neil. So in summary, with Canterbury Christ Church University, you can take the Diploma in Education and Training or the Professional Graduate Certificate in Education and Training. 
In year one, you will cover three modules at level four. In year two, you may choose three modules at level five and you are awarded the debt diploma in education and training. But in level two, you always have the option if you have a degree to undertake your work at level six and then you would qualify with the professional graduate certificate in education and training. The other pathway is the diploma in education and training or the professional graduate certificate with the subject specialist pathways. Um, you will have two subject specialist modules, one in your first year and the one the other one at the beginning of the second year. Uh, you will complete all the other four modules in the generic sort of in the same way as the generic pathway, but you will have two specific modules will be, which will be related to your subject specialism. It's worth noting that if you are undertaking this pathway, you need to have a minimum of 50% in the subject specialist area. Next slide, please. Um, of course, it's very important to talk here about the professional body accreditation and the Society for Education. The set administ administers in a way our QTLS on behalf of the Education and Training Foundation. So on upon completion of either the diploma or the professional graduate certificate or indeed the PGCE, you would be able to register with the Education and Training Foundation. Um, and you would be able to start your journey towards your professional formation and gaining your QTLS. If you'd like more information, please follow the website for the Education and Training Foundation. Next slide. Our next programme with the um, Canterbury Christchurch University is the PGCE in further education. We're very, very excited and very proud that we are the only partner uh, working with Canterbury Christchurch University uh, indeed to offer this PGC in further education. It's a two year program part time again. Attendance is one day a week for your theory plus another day or equivalent of another day for your teaching practice. Um, and for requirements, as you'd expect to have a degree of two to or above, um, you would need to demonstrate competence in your communication skills, literacy and numeracy. Um, your personal statements, statement would in a way need to indicate valid reasons to want to do this program. Um, you'd need to successfully complete your initial assessment um, activities, which include an interview, micro teaching and a piece of writing. Um, we accommodate all subject specialisms in a way, um, so different subjects that you may have, but um, an offer of a place is always pending on the college being able to secure a placement for you in your subject specialist area. Um, we are ver always very open and very supportive and uh, all the trainees on placements are really quite happy with the support that they get on placements that we provide. Next slide please Neil. Um, you will cover a range of topics. Again, you will see that there is a um, pattern here. There are again six modules. You start with an introduction to teaching and learning where you will gain the basic tools, uh, so to speak, your basic toolkit of um, teaching and, and, and assessment. So you will learn main techniques of uh, what is involved in teaching, lesson planning, resources, assessing students. Um, you will talk about how to embed English, math and ICT and you'll move on to your next year where you focus a lot more on reflective practice, on curriculum design, which is a very important uh, part of um, the teacher training qualifications overall and you will finish it off with your personal sort of research which is about developing practice. Um, there is uh, teaching practice which is um, a very important element of the program as such. It is organised by the college uh, so as I said you would be attending a minimum of one day a week um, we have got dedicated mentors on placement and in a way our mentors play a pivotal role in the pedagogical development in your journey. You will have observations of teaching. There are eight observations, again four in the first year, four in the second year. You will be supported through one-to-one -one and group tutorials. You have written assignments, six of them, and you will be taught jointly by uh, Canterbury Christchurch University tutors and the college tutors. Next slide, please. We move on to now the teacher training qualifications, uh, but this time those that are offered through City and Guilds. Um, we offer the level four um, set or certificate in education and training through City and Guilds. Um, and 
as you can see there, the entry requirements are again a minimum of level three qualification in your subject um, in your area of subject specialism. Uh, level two English and maths, you would have either completed this or if you haven't done so, then you would be working towards completing that uh, whilst you are on the course, of course. Um, you will demonstrate at the interview the ability to benefit from the course, successfully complete initial assessment activities and meet the teaching requirements. For the CET, the teaching requirements are 30 hours um, of teaching practice. Um, the um, CET is offered from usually from a, um, through a period of time from December through to uh, July of that particular academic year. There are a number of units. Some of them are, are mandatory, as you can see there, and there is also an optional unit. Again, as you'd expect, you have elements of teaching practice, lessons and observations. You will cover lesson planning and resources, and your attendance is again one day a week plus um, your normal teaching practice or we do also offer it as a two evenings um, a week um, theory and then your practice would be in your um, in your natural environment. Next slide please Neil. Um, now we move on to the level five diploma in education and training which of course is suitable for those who have completed their certificate year or those who perhaps completed certificate in another institution or with a different awarding body then you can come and join us for the second year and complete your diploma in education and training. Attendance is again one day a week. Your teaching placement is again your natural teaching environment to um, in a way the entry requirements as you'd expect would be completion, successful completion of the certificate in education and training, your qualification in the subject area, level two English and maths or working towards it, um, the ability to benefit from the program, successful completion of the interview and meeting the requirements for teaching which uh, for the second year, as you can see, is 70 hours. Uh, you will uh, cover a range of um, units. Some of them are mandatory and there are three optional units as well. Again, the other elements of the programs follow the same sort of pattern with teaching practice, lesson observations, lesson planning and resources. The uh, um, City and Guilds qualifications are taught by our uh, teacher education team at Enfield. Thank you very much. Next slide, Neil. Um, all the teacher education sort of um, um, programs will involve you in a range of learning and teaching activities. There is a variety of approaches um, and we as a team, we aim to model the best practice. Um, we offer you sort of um, a varied, um, a varied program, a number of teaching and learning strategies, a great sort of suite of resources for Canterbury um, Christchurch qualifications. We have got the VLE uh, Blackboard. We've got Moodle for um, the City and Guilds qualifications. Um, the trainee teachers in a way will be involved in sharing and developing the ideas in working as part of a team, in working as a group, in participating in guided learning activities, either theory or practice. We expect the trainees to really be open minded, be open to learning, be flexible, motivated. Um, to develop the skills and knowledge, be be kind of responsible for their learning and also be prepared to go beyond what um, sort of information and knowledge they have built up up to that point. Because if you work with established teachers, we all have got our theories we have espoused to, but also we want to be open to new learning and perhaps challenging the practices that we've had so far. Um, we always base our sort of our ethos is that learning is a shared responsibility and we encourage all trainees to take an active part. Um, support and encouragement is not just from the tutors, it's from the from the peers. And this is a very important element of the program as such. Uh, um, we don't intend for the trainees to just rely on the tutor, but we want the trainees to develop a scholarly approach to all the activities and any aspect of the program. Next slide, Neil, please. Um, as you can see there, you've got the 2014 professional standards. There are 20 professional standards and whether you are studying on the um, diploma in education and training or the uh, professional graduate certificate or the PGCE, the expectation is that you will demonstrate throughout the programme that you are working towards and you are developing the 20 professional standards um, and you can download the professional standards and you will be working towards those and we expect you to reflect on these professional standards in a way your overall achievement will be based on meeting these particular standards. 
Next slide, please, Neil. Um, as most of you would be very keen to know about uh, what funding is available out there, you can self-fund, of course, but there are student loans available. Uh, you can apply through Student Finance England um, and um, student loans can include a tuition fee loan to cover the cost of the course and a maintenance loan. Of course, it depends on your personal circumstances here. Um, you don't need to have a confirmed offer of place to apply. Um, and it, as you can see, you can start repaying, uh, kind of repaying for your loan at a certain point once you start earning a certain amount per year. Um, if you would like a step-by-step -step guide to how to apply for the loans, please please visit the uh, .gov, um, gov.uk website to find out a bit more information about that. Thank you. Next slide, please, Neil. Well, last but not least is our um, other qualification, which is the um, Cambridge CELTA Certificate in English Language Teaching to Adults. My colleague later on will be talking to you a little bit more in detail about this particular programme, so I will not go into detail about it, but just cover just the key principle sort of points here. Uh, why CELTA? Because it is internationally recognised qualification and um, most of the applicants do express sort of that keen interest in uh, gaining a qualification which is so widely recognised. It is open to um, um, candidates who are new to teaching, so you don't need to have any teaching experience as such, but also it's open and has been taken on board by even practitioners who would like to have a qualification to, to demonstrate the subject knowledge of teaching English. Uh, of course, there are entry criteria to meet and my colleague will cover those a little bit later. You will sit an initial assessment. We expect you to complete a pre-interview task, so you will work and you will study even before you come to the interview and you will be sent those in that particular information early uh, before you join us for the interview. Um, you would expect CELTA to have theory and teaching practice. All the teaching practice is organised by the college. It's part, it's an integral part of the programme as such. Our CELTA is delivered over 20 weeks and attendance is usually one day a week. So it's a full day's sort of attendance, including theory and teaching practice. Upon completion of CELTA, a number of our trainees, they either progress onto the diploma, professional graduate certificate in FE, or the PGC in further education. Thank you. And the next slide. Well, if you are still thinking about why should I choose Cornell, um, here is a summary of reasons. Well, we've got high quality HE provision, which is built on a very long and successful partnership with Canterbury Christ Church University. We've got a very well established department with a wide range of um, courses from level two to level seven. We've got pre-service qualifications and in-service qualifications for um, candidates who are interested in the post-14 education sector. We've got a range of professional and academic training courses which lead to QTLS. Um, status and our teacher educators have got extensive teaching and teacher training experience. They are um, highly professional and passionate about um, the education of um, and the training of the new teachers. We've got a fantastic community of mentors who support the trainees development and we offer you nationally recognized excellent excellence. We really are really keen and passionate to support the current teachers professional development and to inspire the teachers of tomorrow. Thank you very much, Neil. And well, that's it for me, really. And um, please, to apply, visit our website, cornell.ac.uk, find your preferred course, do send in the application form, and then you will be able to arrange an interview with us or one a member of my team. Um, if you would like to ask us questions, the information is there. You can either email or call us. And I really look forward to seeing some of you at our interview and really to uh, beginning one uh, your teacher training journey with us. Thank you very much. And um, I think that's all for me and any questions? Not quite all from you, Maralba. All There's right. A couple of questions come in. Thank yeah, you ever so good. much no for problem. that. That was exceedingly comprehensive view of, of Cornell's um, broad um, range of courses. So thank you very much for that. And for those who are watching live and those who may be watching um, uh, recording, we're making a recording of this whole session available. So if there's any information you want to review for Moralba um, or Matthew's sessions, you'll be able to do that um, at your leisure. Anyway, so I've got a couple of questions. Um, mm -hmm. I would like to teach adults, this person says, and I don't know what subject I want to teach. 
<laughs> how or when would I decide? Good question. Right, that, that's a very good question. And actually, uh, when, when applicants approach us, they do have this sort of particular question in mind. Um, first is to look at your um, qualifications up to that point. Uh, depending on what you studied, um, whether you did perhaps um, a vocational course, let's say whether you studied perhaps could be construction, could be hairdressing, could be IT, could be academic or vocational qualification. Have a look at your previous qualifications. What did you study? Did you like that? Was that a subject that you think you have gained enough knowledge or maybe you have got industry experience and you'd like to pass that knowledge on to the new generation. Um, once you've looked at your qualifications, then you see at what level. So if I've got a qualification, let's say in hairdressing and my qualification is at level one, and then I know, well, the level one is not the full qualification in hairdressing, I need to go up to level three. So you know that you need to get yourself up to the highest level of qualification in the subject that you wish to teach. Um, and at that point, then you will know that, yep, yeah, I'd like to teach this subject. I've got my subject qualification and then you come and approach us. Then you would like to be a teacher to teach that subject to others. Um, and then that is how you know um, what qualification is the right one for you. I hope I've answered oh, the question. I think so. Yeah, nice one, Mara. Well, thank you. Um, got some more questions, actually. Um, this person is a learning support assistant at a college okay. at the moment mm -hmm. and that she says oh maybe he actually i'm not sure um they say that they are planning to do a level three education and training course so that's a level three course yeah, that, that yeah. Cornell offers yeah. um, they want to be a lecturer so they're, they're a learning support assistant at the moment they want to be a college lecturer mm -hmm. is um that level three education and training course the right choice for them i guess to a degree it depends on their the qualifications that they have they at have. the moment True. but let's They're, assume yeah. for a moment that they've got the right qualifications to do the level three course yeah. but perhaps not um higher education, education. Okay. or something like that um it's 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 a very good question somebody if someone is working in an educational environment um yes the starting point is the award in education and training if you don't have your teaching practice hours and um, and you think, well, I don't think I'm teaching a group of students. I don't have that that yet. So you would start with the award in education and training, which is your level three. So in a way, it's your first step towards gaining your teaching qualification. Once you are ready and once you complete your level three award and then you'd like to move on to your two year diploma as such in education and training, you'd need to ensure that at that point you have secured some teaching hours, which would mean that um, anyone is taking over a class and it's they are responsible for a group of learners. Now you might say, well, I'm an LSA. I can secure that at my workplace where I am supporting, I can be allowed perhaps to do some teaching with this under the supervision of the main class tutor and that is fine. That means that somebody has been able to secure uh, solo teaching, so independent teaching could be under supervision and that is fine. And if they've got that and they have got at least a level three qualification, then they can jump on directly onto the two year um, kind of either the full two year diploma in education and training with um, CCCU or start with a certificate and then you move on to the diploma. OK, and is there a, is there a number of hours of solo teaching, if that's the right yes. expression that this person yeah, would absolutely. need to do? Yeah, so if, if, it is, if you're looking at the first year, you're looking at a minimum of 40 hours uh, if you're following the Canterbury Christchurch University route. So we expect about 40 hours for the whole academic year in the first year. If you're following the City and Guilds route, then we're looking at 30 hours. OK, sorry, one final question. And would, would those 30 or 40 hours, would online teaching count? Because obviously at the moment with lockdown, <laughs> less opportunities to eyeball yeah. a class face to face, as yes. it were. Um, well, uh, certainly 
we're talking about the next academic year. So um, any decision that we'll be taking about the next academic year is pending on uh, government guidelines, awarding organizations guidelines or the higher education guidelines. So I cannot uh, sort of speak now for what the guidelines will be in September, because as you know, the, the situation is quite fluid. However, I can talk from the current experience. Um, our students with the um, Canterbury Christchurch University have been successfully engaged in online teaching teaching and learning, and we've even completed observations of uh, teaching practice uh, through observing our students teaching online, and it has been an excellent experience. In a way, we've been impressed with the level of professionalism of our trainees and with how quickly they adapted to the new mode of teaching and learning. OK, cool. Thank you very much. Um, another question. Um, how do these qualifications differ from things like Teach First? Uh, usually teach first, you would um, undertake those qualifications if you are more in more kind of inclined towards primary or secondary education and you go through teach first and that, that that's the pathway. So if, if someone is um, kind of is just has decided I just want to teach primary or just secondary um, and not the sector of 14 and above. So if they just want to limit themselves to that, then they would follow the teach first route. I see. Cool. OK, grand. Um, and finally, I think for, for you, Maro, thank you for your time. Um, in the entry requirements, um, yep. it says demonstrate at interview the ability to benefit from the course. What mm -hmm. does that mean? Um, the interview is a holistic process. So we will be um, we will have a range of questions and um, we by by engaging in um, Q&A with the personal tutors and, and with the course organizers, uh, we want to see that you are someone who will really be able to benefit from the program uh, because someone might really want to do the program, might not be the right time for them, which means that they will not be able to get 100% and benefit from the program. We want to see that um, the candidates are able to demonstrate commitment, are in a position to demonstrate commitment, and um, have got a genuine interest in teaching in the sector and um, have got perhaps, um, depending on the program they're applying, have got the relevant experience um, in the sector and have got the teaching hours. So you can't benefit from the course, for example, if you don't have the teaching hours. So you might be a very good candidate otherwise, but lack of your teaching hours might put you at risk of not benefiting from the course because you can start, there is no teaching hours, can't be observed, can't extend the range of practice. So in that way, you won't be able to benefit. So so these are the things that we will be looking um, at the interview, but it's, it's very important to look at the interview as a holistic process. So we don't just make a decision on how well you did in your academic writing. Yes, we, look, we, we will look at that, but also we'll have Q&As. Uh, we will have a discussion about the sector, about the motivation, about the experience, experience um, and have a look at the candidate overall um, and not just one particular aspect um, as such. OK, Maraba, thank you. Um, I'll just okay. double check we haven't got any more questions. Yeah. No, that's your lot. Thank you ever so much for your time. Do stay on in case there are any other questions yeah, that sure. come in. But thank you for that comprehensive look at Conell's courses. I think the, the key message really above all of that is, is go on the website, have a look, apply, by all means, rewatch this um, excellent presentation again to get more information. But I think get an application in and then we can start that conversation with the uh, the FE teachers of the future, I guess. So thank you again, Maralba. Matthew, um, it's over to you now. Matthew works for City and Islington College as these uh, fine slides that you're seeing on your screen um, demonstrate. So I'm going to hand over to Matthew now who will talk to you about the courses that City and Islington offer. Matthew, you're on mute. Thank you, Neil, for the reminder. Um, Always a pleasure. Neil's, Over to you, Matthew. As Neil said, my name's Matthew, and I am uh, work in the ESO and teacher training department at City and Islington College. Um, and in fact, all the courses we offer um, run at our Finsbury Park Centre in what we call the Centre for Lifelong Learning. So it's uh, principally a centre based in Finsbury Park um, for adult learners. Um, and that's a separate centre. There are many other centres um, in CIC. 
So I'm going to talk to you today about the CELTA course. So the CELTA course is the Certificate in Teaching English to Speakers of Other Languages. Now, the content and requirements for CELTA are set out by Cambridge. And if you go to their website, um, you will find a lot more uh, detail about the course and um, testimonials from students about how they've been able to take this qualification and use it um, all around the world. Um, so the content is prescribed, so the, the course at Cornell, for example, and our course, you will cover the same components, uh, you will be assessed in the same way, uh, and you will have the same amount of teaching practice. So um, those are all standards set by the awarding organisation. Uh, so please do um, later on when you uh, want to apply, have a look at both, both centres, have a look at the dates um, that would suit you best. Um, like Connell, we do uh, a model which is one day a week um, and that lasts for 20 weeks. Um, but we also run an intensive course which starts in June uh, and, and in that way you can get the qualification in four weeks. And this really is an intensive course, uh, so uh, do do bear it in mind. But it is a lot. Is, it is a route, sorry, that uh, lots of people choose to follow, and it does allow you to start work um, mainly overseas in in private language schools following this route. Um, if you wanted to take the CELTA and use it in the UK, you would need to do further uh, qualifications if you wanted to work in the state sector but if you wanted to work in private language uh, schools or language centres then the CELTA is is one of the requirements that you would be um, asked to fulfil. So I'm going to talk to you uh, a little bit about is the course for you, I'm going to talk about the entry requirements, a bit more detail about the course itself, how you would be assessed and then get into the costs and uh, loans and things like that. So um, as Moralba said before, the CELTA uh, it can be for new teachers starting their careers. It can be for first language speakers or non first language speakers. Um, you can be a teacher with some experience and want to develop your skills. Uh, and, and for teachers based in the UK, often it's a way of uh, combining travel and teaching and many people then realise how much they love teaching and would come back or where they're, wherever they are and follow uh, further teaching qualifications to, to widen their opportunities for employment. So the entry requirements, uh, sorry, the course format, uh, and then we'll get down to the entry requirements. So the course length is 120 hours and that's how we're able to have different modes of delivery. So um, our one day a week course, will be kind of theory in the morning and then pract practical application in the afternoon. Um, you can do the courses full time or part time. Uh, they can be blended to be online and uh, we are looking at the, the impact of COVID and how our courses might look in September. So there are options of having um, the delivery online, um, but we're still working through those uh, in line with government guidelines. Um, but it's important to know that all of the options on this course, you do get teaching practice in English language classes. So those are that's teaching with a real class of students. So students, you'll be teaching students who want to learn and you'll be observed by your um, fellow trainees and your tutor and you'll be given development points. You'll be praised and then you'll learn from doing. So it's a really, really good course. Um, there are also aspects of uh, um, theory that you need to cover and those are assessed in written assignments. Uh, and the other form of the assessment, as I noted before, is that you can do assessed teaching practice. Um, I should say at this point um, that it is um, a pass or fail course, so um, you can fail the course, but obviously uh, we would do everything to support you through your course. Um, but the final sign off on the course uh, comes from an assessor from Cambridge who comes in and checks um, work and checks teaching uh, to sign off um, success. If you'd like to join the course, uh, the entry requirements are um, a proficient English language user. So they've used the common uh, European framework for languages at C1 or above. 
um, and those will have equivalents depending on where you've learnt English. You should be educated to the standard required for entry into higher education and you should be aged 18 or above and those are all requirements um, set down by the awarding um, organisation Cambridge um, uh, and they're linked to being suitable for, for, for using the course practically on successful completion. I'm going to talk a little bit more about um, the course in more detail. So um, as you can see on this slide, um, you will have um, full tutorial support and consultation. So those are one one to ones through the course. Um, you have formal consultation with your tutor, uh, as well as uh, more formal um, targets and a review of your progress on the course. Um, you will have there's one tutor um, per six trainees and normally courses will be in multiples of six and, and normally a course size um, a student number of 12 is is the maximum. Um, you're supported throughout the process of this course. Um, uh, you're supported in your lesson planning. You're supported in your delivery. Um, you're supported to improve, to, to reflect on your practice and, and to become the best teacher that you can be. Um, as part of the process as well, you'll observe teachers. Um, and in this instance, you'll go to different classes. You'll observe um, experienced teachers in a teach in their classes, so real classes. Uh, and, and then you'll be able to have discussions with those teachers uh, and learn from them. Uh, you'll have uh, six hours of those. Uh, and there's also the option of, of having uh, film sessions that you can watch and learn from as well. We described earlier that the course was for 120 hours, but the recommendation is that you should also allow for 80 additional hours of learning through the course, and that would be pre-course as well as um, assimilating information that you've got from the course um, through the course and then being ready to use that afterwards. So the learning process starts um, on application really when you start your pre-course task uh, and that's where you'll need to start learning. So when you're considering the mode and model of your delivery of the choice you want of the course you want to choose, please allow for an additional a significant amount of additional time to fully be uh, to get the most from the course. Um, the 120 hours is the contact time, but you will need to put in a, um, more hours to to get the most from the course. And the last point on the slide is about the, the ratio of tutors to candidates, as I mentioned before. If we move on to the next course, these are the, the main topics that you'll you'll be covering. And these will be, you'll apply these both in practical situations and theoretically and through assignments. So you'll learn about learners and teachers and different teaching and learning contexts. Uh, you'll start uh, analysing language and develop your language awareness. And yes, this is the grammar section, so you will need to know about grammar, um, but you'll be supported to do this. You'll learn how to teach uh, different skills in language. So you'll learn how to teach reading, listening, speaking and writing. And then you'll be supported to develop your planning uh, of both uh, planning documents, so thinking about course structure and lesson organisation, but also developing resources to be used in the classrooms. Uh, and then there's the wider discussion and development of your teaching skills and your professionalism. Um, I mentioned before that you'll be assessed both in your teaching practice and through written assignments and on this slide you can see a little bit more detail about both. For your teaching practice you'll teach for a total of six hours and those are split up so remembering that this is an initial teacher training course um, you will start with a, a shorter input of maybe 20 to 30 minutes uh, where you'll be uh, given topics to teach the class. Uh, and then at the end, you'll receive feedback from your tutor. And eventually those uh, lesson times increase to a maximum of one hour where you'll be assessed and um, given feedback to help you improve and point out all the good things you've been doing as well, hopefully. Um, you'll work with groups at two levels um, minimum. So if possible, we can work with different levels. And this is to, because teaching at different levels can have different challenges. So you'll, you'll work at an entry level, so quite a, 
um, let's say a low level and then a higher level. So you will see that the challenges they pose are very different. Uh, and then the assessment is based on your overall performance. And if you refer to the Cambridge uh, website, you'll see um, you can access the, um, the curriculum guidelines and the assessment criteria there. And you'll see that it's, it's very detailed, um, but, but very well explained. So I'll, I'll leave you to do your research on, on that via that website. For the written assignments, the maximum length of a written assignment is a thousand words. Um, and these focus on some of the topics that we mentioned in the previous slide. So you'll analyze and respond to learners' needs. You'll analyze language, so you'll identify um, errors and suggest ways of correction. Um, you'll describe um, different ways of teaching language skills. And um, as Maralba described on, on many of the other teaching uh, training courses, um, one of the main, main uh, or the most significant and most important things to do is to be able to reflect on your own classroom practice uh, and from those reflections identify um, what's gone well and what perhaps hasn't and, and make change. And, and actually that last one is a really important skill to take from the course into your teaching career and carry that on. And we find that the best teachers are able to reflect really well on their teaching and kind of uh, give themselves their own feedback to make improvements and, and do things differently. Um, the cost of our course at City and Islington is just over £1,400. Um, and for, for the CELTA courses, you are able to um, access advanced learner loans. Those are different to student loans, but again, you can access the information from the same portal, which is uh, www.gov.uk. Um, and th those are the criteria there. So it's for people over 19 plus. Um, the loans uh, has, uh, it's not, a uh, loan eligibility is not based on your income. So there are no credit checks um, and you need to get a learning and funding information letter. And you get that from the college um, when you do your course, when you um, are accepted on the course and the admissions team um, here and at Canal will be able to help you with that process should you choose to study at one of our colleges. And the next thing is, yeah, just yeah, just go on, find some more information about uh, the course on our website, uh, make your application. Um, as you can see, the, the website address is there and then we look forward to hearing from you. We'll get back in touch, arrange interviews in whatever format um, is suitable for, for when you apply and uh, we'll, we'll try and see if the course is a good fit. Thank you. Thank you, Matthew. That was really interesting. So a uh, good insight into the, the world of uh, teaching uh, those who don't speak English. English, uh, very uh, interesting, uh, important presentation there from Matthew. Got a couple of questions for you, Matthew, if you Great. can. Um, how much, asks this person, can I earn as a Kelter teacher? And can I teach privately with this qualification? Yeah, so, so um, the, the CELTA course um, is mainly used for teaching in private language schools and uh, teaching overseas. And so within that context, the salaries can range quite drastically. So if you, if you look for jobs overseas, you'll find that CELTA um, is one of the requirements that most jobs, in fact, will ask for. Um, and certainly in private language schools, that, that will be the case as well. If you intended to build a career in the UK, you would need to um, uh, add additional qualifications uh, to work either in the state sector or at universities. But that's not to say that you can't um, start earning a living um, using the CELTA course. Um, I haven't answered the question numerically. I appreciate that, but the range uh, is vast and it would depend on the reputation of the school. Um, and the context of the work that you're going into. Sure, yeah, but I guess that a CELTA qualification is quite literally your passport to a world of education opportunities, if you'll pardon the pun. So I guess, as you say, Absolutely. depending on where you end up teaching, you could be earning uh, quite a large uh, range of salaries, depending on where you're teaching and in what country. Okay, Absolutely. cool. 
Thank you. A uh, final question by the looks of it. Um, will this course cover how to teach English online? I guess it's a very topical question with all the lockdowns in place in this country, but also um, around the world. Absolutely. And for um, kind of like Moraba said about the, the other courses, um, there are options for um, taking the course online and there are adaptions that the award and organisation have um, brought in and we're looking at those. So, um, for example, the current cohort that we're uh, finishing the course with, we've, ad we've added elements of online teaching to, to, for those students um, so that we equip them for this new modern world and uh, whether uh, whether we need to in terms of we're in lockdown or not going forward it certainly is something that I think um, we can look to add on on all courses um, as certainly a t teaching technique or um, a, a new way of working so we are looking at um, uh, delivering the course um, both online and face to face and that will be that will change based on um, restrictions that were that are in place by the time the course starts. OK, cool. Matthew, thank you very much indeed. Um, thank you very much. Can we have no further questions and it doesn't look like we do. So, nope. OK, great. Well, thank you again. Um, I think that's it from from all of us. I hope that's been uh, interesting uh, and and useful. Um, I think all that remains really for me to say is to make sure that you um, apply, go onto the websites, both uh, Conel and the Candy websites, take a look at the courses and um, yeah, if you like the look of something, apply and then we can we can help you with your application. So um, without further ado, I think I should say goodbye and thank you very much for coming along.